But, you know, we've got the candles here, the, you, the candle of faith, the prophecy, and now the candle of joy. Yeah? It's called the candle of joy. It's called the candle of the shepherd for obviously reasons. But it gives us a time to reflect on the joy we have, access to because of our faith in Jesus. One of the defining characters of Christ following is a joyful demeanor. Let's not allow the struggles of this year steal the great joy we have because of Jesus. You know, we can easily get down to that, can't we? We could be been struggling the year. It's not been an easy year, is it? With all the food going up and everything happening. But do you know what? We shouldn't allow it to steal the great joy because we have Jesus. And Philippians 4, 4, 5 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always, I say it again. Rejoice, let your greatness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Amen. Amen. Okay.
Well, good, uh, good morning. Uh, I did mention that we we don't have panel service. I did mention that we had we had actually been to sing with the old big pensioners, but I forgot to mention the ampers. The ampers went off as well. So last week was a week of a massive events. Yeah. So. Uh, so we look at joy this week. We go. We look at joy once I get my notes back. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, joy, joy to the world. We sang that today. Joy to the world. And uh, we looked at the candle of of joy, of joy. So what is joy? What is joy? Yeah. Joy is not just opening the present at Christmas and then it's over. Joy is much more than that. And I'm going to talk about joy this morning. Because I think we, we as um, believers in Christ, sorry, can we turn me down a bit, please? Ah, better. I'm getting shouted now. Me, as, as a believer in Christ, ought to know what joy is. Yeah? Yes, we knew joy. We say, joy and peace be with you on the Christmas cards. Yes. People say they're joyful because they've opened their presents. But that joy is not lasting. That joy is, is, is gone. Joy is not about anything going. Joy is more than the feeling. Don't answer that yet. But I believe Joy is more than feeling. And I want to speak about that today because our candle says joy. So what is joy? We should obviously know what joy is, shouldn't we? To get the benefit of it, we should know what it is. When I used to work in the electrical retailing industry many moons ago when Comet was around and, and Rumblows, anybody remember Rumblows? Yeah? I worked in Rumblows for 10 years and then moved on to Comet and all that. But we were told, we were told that we needed to learn about the features and benefits of a product. The feature is what it does, yeah? And the benefit is how we benefit from it. Simple, yeah? Easy. Well, joy is the same, yeah? See, joy in the dictionary says this. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness. <coughs> Tears of joy. Well, do you know what? They've got it so wrong, haven't they? Yes, it can be happiness. Yeah? But it's much more different to that. And that brings us to 1 John 14 today. And I want to talk to about that. Sorry if my voice is not loud today. Um, I've got a, a bug coming along. Um, not, not me, yeah, but some sort of bug. So I'm going to take a lower, you say thank goodness for that, but uh, there we go. And it says this, John 1.14, I've taken it out of the New King James, but it's very similar the way you ever you take it. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow. There's a lot of words in that. There's a lot of unpacking to do there. It says, And the word became flesh, and dreamt, dreamt <coughs> dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See, a little more than 2,000 2, years ago, yeah, you know, after we see this baby, yeah, Jesus as a baby, we, we celebrate it at Christmas, do we not? Do we not? We celebrate it. We celebrate the only begotten son, yeah? It wasn't a normal baby. We know that. It was to a virgin, yeah? To a virgin. But a little time after, God stepped into the earth as he pitched his tent 
and set up a camp right in the middle of us all. He set up in between in us all. Wow. That is the world dwelt, and it can mean to set a tent. In other words, the word became flesh and pitched his tent among us. So he became among us. Yeah? Isn't that great? Well, I hope it's great. Don't look great, yeah? But, uh, <laughs> it, it's a great thing, isn't it? It's a great thing. And he came to earth, yeah? And, and, and he, he, he was a vir- born of a virgin. He, he, we see him as a baby in a manger. And then, you know, as he grows up, as he grows up, he, he comes amongst us, yeah? He's amongst us. To set up tent. In other words, the word became flesh and pitched his tent amongst us. And when he did that, well, it was the most profound revelation of God man would ever know on earth. The most profound, yeah, revelation of God man would know on earth. See, God has visited people and promised they're never alone. We are never alone, yeah? He doesn't want you alone. He wants you to have joy, everlasting joy. And I know sometimes we don't feel like that when we're doing the washing up, you know? When I get up in the mornings and go and load the dishwasher, yes, I find that hard work <laughs> to load in the dishwasher. But when we're doing that, yeah? When we're doing that, sometimes we might not feel that joy. When we accept the friendship of God, we experience joy. We experience real joy. And it's this I want to talk about today. Real joy. Real joy. Not the joy that's going to last just over the Christmas period. Not the joy that's just going to last with over the presents. You know, comes and 25th and it goes. No, everlasting joy. Do you want everlasting joy? Well, we've got everlasting joy. Yeah. And sometimes we. Joy is a choice purposely made. See, joy is made purposely. But what's the difference? It's difficult to define. define. See, it's possible to, be, to feel joy in difficult times. It's possible to. A joy do not need a smile in order to exist. Although it does feel better when we have one. Joy can share its space with emotions, sadness, sham, or anger. Happiness can't. <coughs> Fullness of joy is found in the knowing God and delighting in the excellence of his character. The excellence of his character. To be in the presence of God, to enjoy fellowship with him, is the greatest blessing that anyone can imagine. This is the joy, the type of joy we need and be talking about. This is the type of joy we need in our hearts. Yes? How do we as Christians, those who love Jesus, experience that? Well, Romans 5, 2 to 3 says this. I want to tell you this because because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserving privilege where we now stand. We are in a place of privilege. I heard on the television this morning, I was talking about the news, it wasn't a good situation, but somebody had actually been doing, um, uh, uh, having, uh, you know, that, what do we call it, the stuff from COVID, had actually made £60 million pound by COVID. And, and, and he said he was in a privilege, you know? I'm just trying to display a privilege what a privilege is, yeah? And constantly joyful forward to sharing God's glory. We are undeserved privilege when we stand and we're constantly and joyfully looking forward to sharing God's glory. Who's looking forward to sharing God's glory? Who's looking forward to that, yeah? We're all looking forward to that, aren't we? 
don't want to go past that. <laughs> but, 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 but looking forward to it all the same. Look, you know, but uh, looking forward to it all the same, isn't it? Yeah? When we can joy, rejoice too, when we run into problems and trials, we know that they help us develop endurance. How do we know that? Because it tells us. Yeah? You know, it tells us, doesn't it? Yeah? The endurance. It's not nice. It's not nice. Nobody really likes going through, through trials. Nobody likes it. I don't like it. I don't think anybody likes it. But it characterises us. I wish it wouldn't characterise us so much. But <laughs> and keep going through trials, but someone has said that a definition of a Christian is one who is completely fearless, continually cheerful, and constantly in trouble. <laughs> well, it, it does, you know, that's true in a way, isn't it? Do you know the secret to that kind of Christianity? Let's face it, most of us feel really a being as a Christian should excuse us somewhat from trials and sufferings. We, you know, that's the way most people look at Christians, don't they? They look at Christians and say, you've got it all together, yeah? They look at Christians and think, you don't go through anything. But we do, yeah? We do go through trials and tribulations, yeah? We do go, we do go through a mill, a supper. But we have a joy, we have a joy. Don't get me wrong, I don't enjoy going through the mill, yeah? I don't enjoy that. But we have a joy in Jesus Christ. That's where we have our joy, yeah? I know that if you were asked, we would say that we realise that sufferings may come, but we don't think of them as really necessary. We think that the sufferings are a sort of sign that something's wrong, but well, it's not. But if we keep in fellowship with Christ, things ought to go well. Well, not always. Not always. See, the joyfulness we see here is spiritual joyness. This is what he's talking about here. Spiritual joyness in Jesus Christ. Jesus came into the world with joyfully, with joyfulness. Yeah? Joy, let me tell you. Jeremiah said this, Thy words that found, and I ate them, thy words for me became, wait for it, a joy and delight for my heart. Wow. See, we need to understand this word joy. Did you know the Bible words, shara, Greek, says this, shara, or, which is C-H-A-R-A, if you can pronounce it better, carry on. But what I will say is joy and rejoice is a Greek noun that describes a feeling of inner gladness. Have you got that feeling of inner gladness today? Have you got that feeling of inner gladness? This is what God wants of you. This is what Jesus wants you to have. A joy of inner gladness. Yeah? Of rejoicing. Did you know Shara? occurs 60 times in the New Testament. And I've always been told this, if it's once in the Testament, you know, we take notice of it, yeah? Twice, we take more notice. But three times, wow, do we take notice. So 60 times, wow, what is God saying to us? He's saying 60 times, yeah? And rejoice is a Greek noun that describes the feeling of inner gladness, delight and rejoicing. Joy is a feeling of inner gladness. Joy in the New Testament is virtually always used to signify a feeling of happiness that is based on spiritual realities, independently of what happens. Joy is a deep-seated pleasure. It is a depth of assurance and confidence that ignites a cheerful heart. Who wants a cheerful heart? I want a cheerful heart. You don't want a cheerful heart. Some people here don't know whether they want a cheerful heart or not, but I definitely want a cheerful heart. Perhaps I'm not, as calf. I fail most times. Yeah? But it's 
great to have a cheerful heart, isn't it? It's a cheerful heart that leads to cheerful behaviour. Wow. This is a lesson for me here as well. A big lesson for me here. Cheerful behaviour. God's gift to believers. Joy is a path of via assets, as discussed below. His spirit magnifies this supernatural joy in his children. Joy is deep down sense of well-being that abides in the heart of a person who knows all is well between himself and the world. That is joy. But we know that all is well between us and the world. Wow. It's a big thing, isn't it, joy? It's a big thing. So in Greek, we looked at Hebrew there, yeah? Now in Greek, it's a noun. But in Hebrew, it's a verb. Do you know the difference? Well, of course you do. Yeah? And I'm not going to insult your intelligence to know about what is a noun and what's a verb. A verb is a doing word, isn't it? The verb is a doing word. Yeah? And joy is a doing word. Yeah? Joy is a doing word. Delighting in its excellence. For instance, in doing action. In doing action. Did you know both in the Bible, Old and New Testament, the mark both individual of the believer and the corporate of the church it is a quality of not simply an emotion grounded upon God himself and indeed derived from him. It's not simply an emotion. Corporate worship in the Old Testament, for instance, is described as spontaneous joy. We had a bit of that on the... Uh, on, uh, a bit, a bit, yeah, a bit of spontaneous joy, thanks Tim. Don't mind me saying, yeah, but it was spontaneous, yeah, it was great, yeah? Yeah? Spontaneous joy, yeah? Personal adoration, rejoicing, do, again, do it. And in the New Testament, we see joy with the connection of the, pro, the good news of the kingdom. Good news of the kingdom. Wow, we've got something to be joyful about, haven't we? You know, hallelujah. We have got something to be joyful about, yeah? Peter says this in 1 Peter 1 8, who having not seen you love, though you do not see it, yet believe it, you rejoice with joy inexperiencedly and full of glory. Oh, P Peter. How different we look at this verse when we understand the word joy. And I'm going to take you to Peter now. You know, Peter 1, 8 to 9 says this, Whom have not seen you love, through now you do not see him, yet believe in you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Wow. Wow, what joy that will be. What joy will that be. As I said, I don't go yet, but what joy would that be? Yeah? You know, this was about the Christian Jesus. They loved Christ. They believed in Christ. They rejoiced in Christ. And through all they were receiving the salvation of their souls, they have now experienced this through, like us. They have never seen Christ in person. See, the more we grow in the likeness of Christ, the more we will personally experience joy and peace. The more we grow in it, you know, there is real peace, there is real joy <coughs> in Christ. In the birth of that baby, there was real joy. Yeah? There is real joy in Jesus. There is real joy because of what he done for us. Real joy. There's real joy. And all we have to do is take hold of it. Yes, it won't be easy all the time. You know? The dishes still got to be washed. Yeah? Things have still got to be done. But, let's have a spring in our step. Knowing, deep down, knowing that Jesus is there with us. Part of us, you know, incidentally, it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. And as we more we draw near to that kind of life we have in heaven, 
is this beauty of the great joy that sanctification brings. You know, the singular means of God's sanctifying grace is Jesus Christ. We'd be made holy through the sanctification of the body of Christ once and for all. See, the kingdom of God is not found in food and drink. You know, we can go down Asda and fill our trolleys full of food and drink for this Christmas. We all do it, don't we? We all do it. We end up having, well, I don't know, more than we need. Stuff it in the freezer for the next three months. We all do it. But it's not found in food. We're not that type of food anyway. Men have pursued joy in every avenue imaginable. Some, as the test we find it, will summon not. Perhaps it would be easy to describe when joy cannot be found. Joy cannot be found in unbelief. Joy is not a pleasure. Lord Byron lived a life of pleasure in everything he did. He wrote the worm, the canker, and grief are mine alone. Joy is not in money. We all say, if we could have a million pounds. We all say, I'll have my Lamborghini. No, seriously. Seriously. It's not in money. Jay Gould, the American millionaire had plenty. When dying, he said, I suppose I am the most miserable man on earth. Joy is not in a position of fame. Lord Beacon's field enjoyed more than his share of both. He wrote, youth is a mistake. Manhood is a struggle. Old age is regret. Joy is not in military gold. Alexander the Conqueror, great conqueror, known for his day, having done so much, he wept in his tent before he said, there are no more worlds to conquer. So where is real joy? The answer is simple. If you were looking today, your answer is simple. It's in Christ. Real joy is in Christ. Everlasting joy in Christ. Everlasting peace in Christ. In all our efforts, are focus on trying to be happy. And everybody is trying to be happy out there. You know, they, you know, you, you've got you've got programs to make you happy, yeah. You've got things to make you happy, yeah. I think that we may be missing the point. But if the purpose is to have joy in our lives, then we have committed to one another in a way that seeks something better than simply self-satisfaction. I believe we can balance both. Martin Lloyd Thomas. Thomas? Yes. Martin Lloyd Jones. Sorry, I've just seen you awaken. You passed. There is only one thing that can give true joy, and that's contemplation in the Lord Jesus. He satisfied my mind, he satisfied my emotions, he satisfied my every desire. He and his great salvation include the whole personality of nothing less. And in him I am complete. Joy, in other words, is a response and action of the soul to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we as believers maximize our, our joy, our emotions? How can we do it? The hope, absolute insurance of the future glory brings by joy. These are only in the Bible. The Lord's world brings joy. The presence and fellowship of believers bring joy. Converts bring joy. Even the angels rejoice. You are in that those you have mentioned are disciplined and walking in truth. Giving brings joy. I'm not asking for you to give today. I'm just saying, giving gives joy. Yeah? Fellowship with Father and Son brings joy. We need to keep short accounts by confessing our sins. So our fellowship is not adversely affected. Are we living real joy in our hearts today? 
You know, my father-in-law used to say, you know, look at some people coming out of church on a Sunday. Yeah? And they're coming out with a big Bible on and they look so miserable. Yeah? We should be coming out joyful. We should be coming out joyful into this place. People that should be saying to us, I'm not telling you off, guys. Please don't think that. I'm not telling you off. I'm just saying, people all the, really see us coming out here on the Sunday and say, do you know what? I want some of that and what they're on. You know, wouldn't that be great? I want some of that and what they're on. That is joy. Yeah? There's only one thing that can give true joy, and that's contemplation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He satisfies our mind, he satisfies our emotions, he satisfies every desire. He and his great salvation include the old personality of nothing less, and in him I am complete. In him, I am complete. Joy, in other words, is a response and reaction of the soul to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance brings joy. The hope, absolutely assurance of future glories bring joy. The Lord's word brings joy. These things I've spoken to you, my joy may be in you, and your joy may be full. That says in John 16, 24, the presence and fellowship of believers bring joy. Hearing those who have mentioned and discipled and walked in the truth brings joy. Giving brings joy. We've already said that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that twice. But, uh, are we living in real joy in our hearts today? Are we living in real joy in our hearts today? Joy is so much more just for Christmas. Joy is so much more than just opening the presents on Christmas Day. Joy is about our Lord Jesus. We can have joy. He came for us to have joy. He died so we could be made right with God. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have joy. Are we going to have joy this Christmas? Real joy. Revelations 21, 3 to 4. For those who put their trust in God, but it's their destiny, and it is a one filled with joy. Isn't that great? That's great. What a verse. Real joy, Revelation. Book of Revelation 21, 3 to 4. For those who put their trust in God, but in their destiny, and they are one filled with joy. So as we go and perhaps have our Christmas dinners this year, not, this, not today, it's not today by the way, alright, it's not to next week, but as we talk about Christmas, just think of the joy, the joy in Jesus.
Lord, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen.